a tale of erotic intrigue. Hey, it's a meeting of all the people Jack Benny owes money to. Crowds, music, color, and excitement. Who doesn't enjoy a football game? African that children, is, the blind? You're one of the lucky ones who can get in. Uh, sir, this is a ticket for the Billy Graham crusade. <laughs> Mob violence is a hoot. Hey, it's Clarence Oddbody. If you're not, well, it's just too bad. But wait a minute. There may be another answer. Perhaps the yes, Mafia can help. thanks to television, that marvel of modern science, even our unfortunate friend and millions of other people can sit back in the comfort of their own home and watch Tila and Tequila. And enjoy every thrill of the game with no struggle for tickets. Out of the stadium, the television cameramen are seeing to it that you can follow every detail of the game. They're out there on the sidelines, following every important piece of action. You know, broads. The cables connect the cameras with the mobile units which are parked outside the stadium. And from these trucks, the scenes covered by the cameras are relayed to the main television transmitter. In glorious low definition. Now let's see what a television studio looks like. It's much more depressing in person, but it's you get the idea. It's a busy place when a broadcast is being made from the studio. Great banks of light swivel down to flood the scene. Cameramen wheel in and out to pick up the action from the angles directed by the director. All of this just to sell you deodorant. To keep the action continuous while the costumes are changed and while different sets are being readied, or to show an action which could not take place on a small stage. Black magic is employed. Of some broadcasts are made by projecting prepared motion picture film right into a television camera. Using the same actors and identical sets, the motion pictures are made in advance. Hey, that's cheating. The electrician, the cameraman, the studio manager, and the actors are all controlled by the director. His job is to see that the broadcast proceeds smoothly and without breaks. Unless he's Terry Gilliam. Because the picture on the television screen must be continuous. Camera one, move in close on the girl. I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. Television and motion pictures are alike because in both, a series of still pictures is flashed rapidly before your eyes. Also, so they both rapidly, make you stupid. But the memory of each picture lingers long enough so that it blends with the next picture, and the object of the picture appears to move. And now let's see what makes a picture a picture. Look closely at this one. Yes, sir. The closer still. Let's use a magnifying glass. No, an electron microscope. Here we see that the picture is really made up of thousands of tiny dots arranged very close together. These particles are called TV-trons. But normally, our eyes don't notice the dots, especially when the picture is being moved. And features boobs. This fact helps to make television and motion pictures possible. Television is simply a way of sending these dots from a transmitting station and putting them together to make a picture on the screen of a receiving set. It's like Wonka vision. Here's the way it works. It's magic. The end. Inside the television camera is a magic electric eye called the iconoscope one of the most important parts of which is this sensitive plate called a mosaic. Not to be confused with the covenant of the same name. It is a rectangular piece of mica covered with billions of tiny photoelectric cells arranged something like this. I'm just winging it here. The scenes being televised go through the camera lens and fall on the photoelectric cells. Some of the cells receive lots of light, others very little. Each cell, according to how much light it gets, each according to its need, corresponding electrical charge. These charges collectively make up an electrical image on the mosaic. The result, Mama's These family. These cells with their electrical charges are scanned by a stream of electrons. The scanning beam skips every other line and returns to scan the remainder of the picture, completing 30 pictures a second. Each picture is composed of 525 individual scanning lines. Which is more than we'll ever need. An electrical need. impulse is released each time this stream covers a group of the photoelectric cells. 
Each separate impulse travels from the sensitive plate of the iconoscope in sequence over wires to the transmitting station. Hey, now it's an Archeo radio it picture. sent out into space to be picked up by aerials connected to television receivers. Hmm. Here, the electrical impulses are carried to another magic tube called the kinescope. Named after Dr. Stanley Scope. And are used to control another stream of electrons which bombard the face of the kinescope, which is really the viewing screen. When the beam strikes this fluorescent screen, each electrical impulse is changed back into a spot of light. In other words, each spot of light picked up by the mosaic of tiny photoelectric cells in the television camera creates a corresponding spot of light on the receiving screen. It's magic, I get it. It moves back and forth so rapidly, actually more than two and one half miles per second, that a complete still picture is formed almost immediately. The quick succession of 30 pictures a second produces the apparent motion. That is why the pictures we see on the screen of our television receiver seem to move. Unless they're of Andy Rooney. Television has come of age. Here, for instance, is a reproduction of one of the first images received on a television screen. It was called the blurry stationary cat hour. Compare that crude picture with these of today, and you can judge for yourself how far along the road to perfection television has traveled. To bring you the Bud Bowl. It is bringing entertainment to millions. And through its magic, we are able to enjoy a combination of radio, motion pictures, and the stage. Actually, some television patents were issued several years before the first automobile was built. Which is neither relevant nor interesting. But because of many technical difficulties that had to be overcome, its development was much slower. Just as the modern automobile is the result of years of research, scientific engineering, and testing by countless miles of actual use, television is the result of endless experiments and new discoveries by patient scientists toiling in their laboratory. You lost me, movie. It has been developed just as the easy riding qualities of today's automobiles were developed by progress through constant improvement. And Americanosity. Today we sit back in roomy, comfortably cushioned seats in steel bodies, insulated against heat and cold and noise. And reality. Surrounded by windows of crystal clear glass, controlling the ventilation to our needs, riding smoothly over all kinds of roads in luxury undreamed of a few short years ago. Why, tis our birthright. And so you can clearly see how much television and cars have to do with one another. Television isn't yet ready to perform miracles like this, but who knows Breasts. what the future holds. It's fun guessing, though. General Motors and Jam Handy remind you to drive cars and watch television instead of connecting emotionally with your family.